All right, we're live here at uh, Scrap Expo on the second day. We might have had a couple extra cocktails last night to celebrate the first a, uh, couple. the first day, but I'm sitting here with uh, Justin Trentadu, right? Yes, sir. From uh, out of Florida, but his company is Uptime, which Nick is the one that told me about Uptime. He goes, dude, you gotta check this out. You gotta check this product out. He goes, it's legit. You and I met in uh, Isery down in Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. So we were basically like, hey, like let's 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 connect. Let's make this do the podcast, set it up, and uh, make it happen. So I'm super stoked we were able to do that, and so we're here today. Man. Yeah, man. Uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, I'm honored to be on your show. I think it's uh, really cool what you're doing, man. And uh, excited to talk a little bit about scrap, a little bit about uptime, and a little about about what you do. Ultimately, like one thing I love about like the diff- what we do like I'm I do the podcast right but I'm an everyday operator like I'm in the scrap business every day like when I leave here and I go back like we're gonna go look at the yards we're gonna like I'm gonna see what inventory I got I'm gonna sell the scrap I'm gonna discuss what production like I'm everyday boots on the ground like in my stuff right and it from what I understand same for you like same I'm, for me man I mean you're uh, in it I mean I've been in the scrap business about 18 years and uh, being in that, I started to see some issues that we were having operationally. Uh-huh. And uh, that's kind of what led me to develop uptime. You know, trying to hold guys accountable to do their daily inspections, to remember when's the last time we did a service on a machine. Instead of looking at a, an oily filter that has some date smudged on there, yeah. uh, having an Excel sheet, having a big board. You know, the, the data was uh, fragmented. And it was hard. It was hard to figure out what was going on. It was hard to hold guys accountable, like you know what they were doing in the yard, what I was doing with my equipment, and that's kind of what led me to develop Uptime PM. So, what is? Your, tell me about your uh, your yard. Where, where are you located? So, so I work now what, with a company called Resource Metal Recycling. Okay. Uh, down in South Florida, we've got four operations down there. We got a shredder uh, in uh, in Broward County, Pompano Beach. And uh, we have, you know, we're full, full service. So we have the shredder, we have a pretty sophisticated downstream that we just installed. Uh, we have our main non-ferrous processing facility in Lauder Hill. Um, that's where we also process the heavy iron. Okay. Uh, and then we have a, two additional feeder yards. So the other feeder yards feed the non-ferrous into our Lauder Hill facility uh, and the cut grades into Lauder Hill. And then all of the shreddable goes to the shredder. And that's really uh, just a commercial area. Uh, we don't buy any peddler scrap at the, at the shredder at all. No, nice. uh, it's it's a tight nice. footprint down in South Florida. Yeah, uh, and uh, uh, land is at a premium down there. When I was, uh, I went and, and did a podcast with Adam Weitzman up in uh, upstate New York, yeah. right? And at his um, Owego facility, they don't take retail scrap, retail scrap either, right? It's just tons in, tons out. They just jam it through there. It comes and, down to uh, your transactional cost. I mean, yeah. if, if you can buy twenty tons of scrap from that one guy, and it takes, you know, it takes. Five, a lot of push-out trailers down in South Florida too. They don't yeah. offload it with cran- a lot of push-outs and a lot of dumps. You know, so if you can buy 10 or 15, 20 tons from one guy uh-huh. and get him in and out, and instead of having to deal with the peddlers, although we all know that that's where the gravy is, yeah. but uh, you know, you have to deal with 20, 30, 40, 50 of those guys to get the same amount that you'll get from you know a commercial account. So yeah. we focus on being efficient, getting the scrap in and out, shredding to the ground every single night. And the only way to be efficient is to have like good equipment, like equipment that that's it's in working condition, that all that shit. So ultimately, like, and this is kind of where I'm going with it is, you know, equipment is like the game changer in our business, right? Like the Absolutely. ability to have you know running equipment, operating equipment, then then obviously have new equipment, good equipment, and it. it you investing back in your business and being willing to make that investment, nothing in the scrap business is cheap, right? Like, I, my wife and I have had this conversation a few times, and I'm like, you know, I bought you a new a new Ferrari today, and it's like a fucking Cinnabogan, you know? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I'm like, because you, you're talking about big money dealers. every time. Like, the barrier of entry is is high. So, going into like what you what you've got what you've kind of developed with uptime is how do you make sure that the Ferrari is getting taken care of exactly right? 100% you couldn't have said it better I mean you spend four or five hundred thousand dollars on an excavator and you have an hourly guy making maybe twenty twenty five dollars an hour yeah and and you and you take that five hundred thousand dollar asset and expect him to take care of it right yeah and you're using a pencil and paper checklist and <laughs> I mean I do the same thing right. like I, I mean I'm, I'm in that boat so right. like I can't sit here and say like 
we're the most updated and do all this. Like, there's certain things we're really good at, and there's certain things that like we we need to like keep pushing forward. Yeah, I mean, it's and it's all about accountability. It's just it's not just about the accountability of the operator who's who's on the piece of equipment every day. Yeah. If that operator's reporting things and and either management or the mechanics aren't getting it done, I mean, there's a lot of stakeholders that have to make make sure that that machine is running, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to hold your operator accountable, but you also want to hold the management accountable, you want to hold the maintenance staff accountable. Yeah. And you need that equipment to run so you can capitalize in good markets. 100%. And, and when it and when it's a bad market, yeah. you still you, you got to be able to operate because you got to do whatever you and you've said this a million times. I heard who you heard you say it, you got to hustle and grind even harder. You have right? to. Yeah. I mean, that's the name of the game for us, right? It's the name of the game for our industry and the and why I love, like, I had, like I, I did a podcast yesterday with uh, Sean Davidson, right? Yeah. Like, he's big on the tech side of our industry and trying to figure out how to close gaps, tighten stuff, like, where it's, like, there's a, you know, like he was saying, like, there's, just look through your process and see where there's some old school shit that you're doing, like, Excel, paper, like, we let's eliminate that, right? And then, so he's looking for opportunities, investments that make sense to do that, right? Which is what you basically create. Like, yeah. you went through your process and said, I'm, I got... Excel sheets and like a guy with a pencil and a fucking clipboard doing stuff that we should just be basically and and not only like to take it like even a step further but not only on the uh, um, maintenance side but also on the regulatory side like the OSHA and all this shit that goes along with it like if something happens God forbid like in your yard yeah they're gonna say let me see your maintenance records on that piece of equipment, on that truck, on that trailer. Thousands of dollars in fines. You and, better be able to produce it. And put, and if you know about it, it's like gross negligence yeah. to them. And that could be, there's a lot of penalties potentially. Yeah. You know, especially on the forklift side, the, 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 lift, the lift trucks, I think OSHA calls them. Yeah. So those are, those are regulated. If they come in your yard, you know, seatbelt's not working, fire extinguisher's not there. Uh -huh. uh, it, it could be potentially a big, big damage. So how long, um, so how long have you been in the scrap industry? 18 years. 18 years. Uh, yeah, so I started. You, what, how, what, what got you into the dark side? So, I, you know, I was in college. I had just got back from a study abroad in Mexico, and uh, my cousin called me up uh -huh. and uh, said he needed a translator to go with him down to Central and South America. Yeah. I had about like three or four weeks left until I had to go back to school. And I was like, man, I'm broke. I've been in Mexico for six months. I have no money. Yeah. I'm painting houses here. He's like, you know, what are you making an hour? And I told him it was like uh -huh. what, 10 or 15 yeah. bucks an hour. And he's like, all right, I'll give you 2,000 bucks and I'll pay all your expenses, but you got to meet me at the airport tomorrow. I threw Done. that damn paintbrush yeah. down. I was like, oh, I'm going to Central and South America. Uh -huh. So, so uh, we ended up going uh, to Panama, Costa Rica and Venezuela. And I was just translating for him. And uh, no idea, just because you can speak a language fluently doesn't mean you like know every register of language. Like, yeah. I didn't know scrap. I didn't even know what it was. I was some you know, dumb college kid. Yeah. And uh, so after that two week span, uh, you know, he, he wanted me to kind of quit school. And I said, no, I'm not going to quit school. I have two more years left. So he said, call me next summer. So mm -hmm. called him next summer. Uh, he ended up sending me to China for three three months. I, I went to China and worked in a processing facility in Taizhou. Okay. Uh, basically lived at the scrapyard, but I but I didn't eat at the scrapyard. Luckily, <laughs> I, I ate with the family, so uh -huh. it, was, it was really nice. Uh, but kind of learned the scrap business, and that was like my first real dive, like getting my hands into it. Like uh -huh. if this was a, a motor processing facility, a wire processing facility, and like a mixed metal processing facility. So I'm over here, you know, the only American. Uh -huh. uh, it, at this place, people are kind of looking at me funny, and I'm just out there trying to learn. I don't know what I'm really doing. Yeah. Um, you know, finally, uh, after that kind of was done, went back the next year, graduated, started <coughs> working at a uh, his brother's facility out in Phoenix, Arizona. He owned a small little retail operation. Okay. And I started buying on the scale, breaking scrap down, breaking wire down. Uh, like you're everything. like a real fucking scrap guy. Well, I like, mean, I, I dove into it. Like, well, you, but you've yeah. like you've kind of seen it from a ton of angles, right? Yeah, yeah, man, I have. That's awesome. And I started buying, and I started like, uh, you know, brokering scrap, traveling. So all this over. is why, like, I did this podcast, right? Yeah. I want to talk to like real, like, you know, people in our industry, yeah. like around our industry that are involved, that like have a, they, they have a sense of like what it's about. I tried so, to get out of the industry, but it just brought, I mean, dude. I just, it's like a. I mean, I did. I thought I was gonna, you know, when I sold my interest in my company in Atlanta uh -huh. in 2019, uh, I, I thought I was gonna do something else. I thought I was gonna just continue with with uptime, but the scrap. I mean, just the the daily, 
the, the, the thing we love to hate, hate to love, whatever you want to call it, yeah. the scrap business. I mean, you just, it's hard to. Get it's out like of a it. vortex, dude. Yeah. It just sucks you in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, okay, I'm still here. Yeah. Like, but I don't know, for me, like, I, I've always loved it. So it is what it is. But I mean, it, when I talk to people so many times, like, well, I thought I was going to do something different. And then I got a call because somebody, once you know the industry and you know the ins and outs and you know the material and you know the processes and whatever else, there's a, there's some people know that you know it. And they're like, hey, what are you doing? Like, yeah. hey, you know, and I get a lot of calls like, hey, will you just come, check, just check this out. Let, let me, give me your two cents, right? And I was, I was talking to somebody. I, I flew to Pittsburgh uh, like about a month ago. A guy was looking at doing a, like a big demo project. He's like, will you just come and just help me estimate the, the volume of scrap that I th- you think is there? And right. I was like, all right, yeah. And, and I, him and I have done, lots of, done some business together, and we're still doing business to this day. And uh, I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll go. Like, because they know you know, like, yeah, yeah. and it gives them another, like, it's it's a, it's kind of an interesting tool. It's like one of those weird tools in your toolbox yeah. that most people are like, you have that tool, like, yeah, you know, I can. Do you think that. the uh, the scrap business has kind of helped you? Because you're obviously in all these other ventures. Mm-hmm. It's like has has your has your scrap life kind of helped you in, with all these other businesses that you've kind of that you guys are doing. It, it, I think they feed off of each other, right? Like. The only, I say, like, I'm, I'm in the, 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 the scrap, the recycling industry, right? So I'm always looking for what's that next step I can do that will, like, provide a better customer service opportunity, right? So for me, like, the tire side, I already yeah. had a built-in customer base. People, I was doing business already. So, like, I'm like, like, so let's say, like, a landfill. They have tires that they take, they receive, and they're trying to get rid of them and whatever else. So I'm like, how can I alleviate that problem? At the same time, I still want to bail your, I want to make, you know, I want to log your scrap, send it to shredders. I, I need to create competitive advantages, right? And basically, it's to where the competitive advantage is, it's, it's hard to replace me because I'm going to give you a good price on your scrap, but at the same time, I'm going to help you take care of another issue that you have, right? There's, I'm just looking for. And those you're gonna. Little, I've seen your project. I mean, you you clean it up. It's it's I'm like tighten, brand new. Yeah, I'm gonna tighten everything up, but I'm gonna make it like do it right. That's and awesome. I'd rather do it right than do like 20 different things. I'd rather just do eight, nine things, just really fucking good. I think so, you have, man. So talk about. I mean, I'm gonna we're gonna take off, but yeah, just give everybody like a little bit of rundown of like what uptime like really is. Like I really want you to. To talk about it. Yeah, uptime uptime PM is a completely digitized process of your entire maintenance system. Uh, from the daily inspections your operators produce, um, we're very flexible uh, in uh, doing this for any type of equipment, not just yellow iron, uh, but we have trucks. You can do this for for stationary assets, shredders, balers, anything like anything like that. Any facilities inspections, mm-hmm. you can you can run your entire maintenance division off this platform. Uh, digital notifications, you know, email blasts, work order processes and flows, uh, complete cost tracking and, and accountability. That's what yeah. it, that's what it's about, man. I love it, man. And like, for, for anybody out there, I'm telling you, like, in our industry, it's been a long, a lot of long time since people really like went on the tech side and really like kind of put something, put their thoughts together and really built something cool. And we're gonna have this another conversation outside the podcast Appreciate and try it, to figure out what we can do to see if we can even keep our shit updated and running tight. Awesome, man. We well, do. thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Thanks, Thanks for lot, coming man. and sitting down, Absolutely. and uh, enjoy the rest of the show. You too, man. All right, buddy. Thanks, Take bud. care.